Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this basic copper ring using just some 12 gauge wire. Alright, well, let's get started. First off, you're going to need a caliper to measure very precise measurements for your ring. Next, you're going to need a mandrel. Make sure to get a steel one, not aluminum one. The aluminum one will divot if you use a hammer on it. Next, you're going to need something to cut the wire. I'm going to use these metal shears because it's the easiest way to cut it, but you can use wire cutters or a saw if you like. Next, you're going to need a soft hammer so you don't mar your piece. Next, you're going to want something to size your ring with. An old ring will work perfectly fine. I just happen to have this. You're going to want to get some wire and spool, 12 gauge for this project. Make sure it's the solid 12 gauge. Next, you're going to want to have a Dremel tool for this. You're also going to want at least one hand file. You're going to need some sort of torch. A butane will do fine for this. A propane is a little bit too big, but it will work. And I normally just use a oxygen acetylene setup, but that's a lot more expensive than both of these other two options. You're going to need something to heat your metal on that's not going to burn. So you can either use a charcoal block, third arm, or a stone tile. Any of these will work. This is a mini anvil. This helps for flattening your ring out so it doesn't have any waves in it. You're going to need something like this. Alright, let's get to this. So, you need to find your ring size. You can use an old ring, or you can use tools I have, like the mandrel and the ring sizers. But we need a caliper to actually get the measurements we need. So, take your caliper, turn it on, make sure it's zeroed out, and take the ring size that you did find, and measure it. And make sure to turn around it, just in case your ring is bent. So after that, you want to take the material that you're using, which happens to be 12 gauge here, and cut back the plastic. Once you got that back, peel it off, straighten it out, and measure it for its thickness, which is about 2 millimeters. Alright, then you're going to take the size you got from the ring, which this one was 17 millimeters, plus the 2 millimeters from the thickness, times 3.14, which is pi. And that should be 59.66 millimeters. Alright, so all you need to do now is set your caliper to that exact amount. Um, if it's a little off and you can't get it perfectly on there, it's fine, because you're going to have to trim back some of the wire anyways. But once you get it locked in place, just like that, and measure it out. And I don't know how, but I cut the exact amount I needed, which is amazing. So just take your cutters and cut it. After cutting it, you're going to have some sharp edges, so you're going to take your hand file and file them down. Alright, it should be nice and smooth now. Alright, so take your block or anything that you can heat your metal with, and your torch, and now we're going to anneal the piece. So just slowly go back and forth. It's going to change all these different colors, like rainbow colors, and to a really shiny black, and then start turning red. You don't want to get it too red, because it will actually melt. So just a dull red color should be just fine. And yeah, just be careful with it. Alright, so now just grab... No, don't grab it. Use pliers. I've actually burnt myself like that. And as you can see, it's really hot. Yeah, once that's done, it'll be all discolored, and we can take care of that later. Alright, now take your mandrel, and this is where you want it to be, but you need to come back here where it's bigger. It's easier to bend this around, and from us annealing it, it made it so easy to bend, you could just do it mostly with your fingers. And to get the two top edges down without stabbing yourself, just take a soft hammer, and just kind of hammer them down until it becomes flush. 
then slide it up to where your ring's actually supposed to be sized, and just continue shaping it. At this point, you want to check, make sure everything is lining up. Now you're going to actually flatten it. You want the two pieces to be completely flat and touching one another. So, bend it, hammer it any way you can so those two pieces meet up perfectly. See, just like this. You want almost no gap between these. With soldering, it is extremely important that your parts are perfectly clean. So, you use pickle. No, not these pickles. This. This will clean off any fire scale and make it so your solder will actually flow properly. So, this is Flux. I got it from Rio Grande. You need this so you can actually use your solder. So, I just put it in a little container and use a paintbrush with it. This is hard solder. I basically buy it by the foot and it has a little bit of melted stuff on it, but that doesn't matter. You can also use brazing rods, but you need to cut some little pieces off of it. Very tiny pieces. Like, way smaller than you think you would need. Here, I'll show you how small. That's how much solder you need to make this ring. That's it. No more. Any more than that, and it'll get everywhere. So this is the ring after it came out of the pickle. It should have a matte finish to it all the way around everywhere. Alright, so you can use a block or anything to put this on for solder. I'm going to use these tweezers that I've set up, and all this is just to get it higher so I can actually see what I'm doing. So, just kind of put your ring in here. If you're using a flat piece, go ahead and just lay it down flat and put the solder next to it. Put some flux on it first though, and make sure it gets between the gap and on top, underneath. Then take that little tiny piece of solder and put it on. Like I said, if you're using a flat piece, just put it right next to it, but make sure it's touching the ring. Right between the two pieces where they connect. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Alright, take your torch. So, what you want to do is slowly heat this with circles. If you heat it too quickly, the flux will start to bubble and knock your solder away and then your piece will never solder. It has to be in contact with the two pieces where they connect. So just slowly do it until you see it turn white and bubble up. Once it does that, everything should be fine and you can actually start slowing down and heating the ring all the way around. The ring will change all the same colors that it did when you were um, going through the process of annealing it. The flux will turn completely glassy and the solder will flow. And once the solder flows, just kind of heat it from the bottom a little bit and stop. Any more and you'll melt it. Alright, go ahead and quench it in some water. And make sure the solder points are connected right. And let's make this an actual ring now. Alright, after you hammered it on here with your soft hammer, go get a piece of wood and hammer it flat because see how it's a little wavy there? You don't want that. So, just start hammering away. Alright, you're going to want to see if it's the right size, and it is. If it's not, you're going to have to cut it right down the solder point and fix it. Now, we're going to take a little burr off of it with the Dremel tool. So, you're going to need some safety glasses for this. So, you're going to use a Dremel with different types of Dremel bits. 
what I use are rubber bits that have diamond. They normally look like this, but one I use a lot, so it's weird shaped. I'll have a link in the description to where you get all the supplies in this video. So, what you want to do is try taking that burr off with these. Slowly, don't press too hard, and this will take a while. Alright, there we go. So, you want it to be all nice and even and shiny everywhere. Now, we're going to switch out to the green buffing wheel and continue the process even more. So the order of these you're going to want to go in is yellow, green, then blue, and then a buffing wheel with buffing compound. Alright, and here we go. It should be pretty much done and nice and shiny all over. Here's both of them next to one another. All we need to do now is buff it. So we're going to take this, put it in this because the ring will get extremely hot and by putting something in here like my scrubby toothbrush We'll hold this in place. You're normally supposed to have a piece of wood, but I don't have one. So you're going to need some kind of buffing wheel. And some buffing compound. I will have a link for this in the description. So, just kind of load it up. It has to get hot and melt onto it. Once it does, it'll have a thick layer like this. You can even see my thumbnail in it. And set it yourself and get ready for a lot of buffing. You don't want to press too hard or it will rip the tool out of your hand. Alright, so it's extremely hot right now. So you need to move it. So quickly grab it and kind of turn it without burning yourself and reset the device. And back to buffing. All right, there we go. So it's all nice and hot now and throw it in the water. And it should be good. See, now it has all this buffing compound stuck all over it. We're going to get that off with the scrubby brush and some soapy water. So, get to scrubbing. It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of actual effort. Hot water works a lot better than just room temperature. Alright, just wipe it off with a paper towel. And there we go. It's all nice and shiny and buffed and reflective. 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 And fits perfectly. Along with its original ring. You're going to want to use a clear coat or a lacquer. And some renaissance wax to seal the ring. It pretty much looks like this and it lasts a long time. So. First thing you need to do is get a microfiber cloth, a ring, and your wax. And this is after you have lacquered or painted it. So take one finger and get very little bit on it. Take your ring and just kind of roll it through here. And just coat the entire thing. And just make sure it's everywhere on here because it's going to protect it as much as possible. Alright, once that's done, take a clean part of the rag and wipe everything off, kind of like you're waxing something. And once that's done, you're good to go and you have a nice copper ring. And here is the finished product.
So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or unsure about anything, just leave a comment for me and I do read all my comments, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be trying to put these up every Monday and Friday if possible, but definitely I will be making a video once per week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.